Have you ever wondered what role the most powerful and mysterious objects, the quasars, played in the early universe? Quasars are brilliant beacons of light powered by supermassive black holes, which can outshine entire galaxies. They are also windows into the distant past, as their light has traveled for billions of years to reach us. This is one of the questions that astronomers have been trying to answer for decades, using powerful telescopes to peer into the distant past. And now, thanks to a new discovery made by the James Webb Space Telescope, we have a glimpse of starlight from two of the most ancient galaxies that host one of the earliest quasars in our universe, seen as they were when the universe was less than one billion years old. This groundbreaking achievement could help us solve the mystery of how the first quasars in the universe formed and how they are related to their host galaxies. In this episode, we will explore this exciting discovery and see how this discovery can help us learn more about quasars, supermassive black holes, and galaxy formation in the early universe. Stay tuned! Quasars are some of the most extreme and fascinating objects in the cosmos. They are powered by supermassive black holes, which are millions or billions of times more massive than our Sun, and which lurk at the centers of many galaxies. As these black holes feed on gas and dust from their surroundings, they create enormous amounts of energy and radiation, which can outshine all the stars in their host galaxy combined. Quasars are so bright that they can be seen across vast distances, even from the edge of the observable universe. But how did these monstrous black holes form in the first place? And why were they so common in the early universe? To answer these questions, we need to go back to the very beginning of time, to the Big Bang. About 13.8 billion years ago, our universe was born in a hot and dense state, and then rapidly expanded and cooled down. For hundreds of thousands of years, the universe was filled with a primordial soup of hydrogen, helium, and photons. Eventually, gravity started to pull matter together into clumps, forming the seeds of the first stars and galaxies. These first stars were very different from the ones we see today. They were much larger, hotter, and shorter-lived than modern stars. They were also made mostly of hydrogen and helium, with no trace of heavier elements like carbon or oxygen. These elements were only created later, when massive stars exploded as supernova, enriching their surroundings with new chemical elements. Some of these supernova also left behind black holes as remnants of their cores. These black holes could then grow by merging with other black holes, or by accreting more gas from their environment. This is one possible way that supermassive black holes could have formed in the early universe. However, this process would take a long time, and it is not clear how it could explain the existence of quasars that are seen less than a billion years after the Big Bang. Is there another way that supermassive black holes could have formed faster and earlier? And how did they become quasars? To find out, we need to look at this new discovery made by the James Webb Space Telescope. One of the James Webb Space Telescope's main goals is to study quasars in the early universe and reveal their host galaxies for the first time. This is not an easy task because quasars are so luminous that they can outshine their host galaxies by a factor of 100 or more. Using the near-infrared camera, James Webb observed two quasars that were discovered by a deep survey program of the Subaru Telescope on Mauna Kea in Hawaii. These quasars are designated J2236 and J2255, and they are located at redshifts 6.40 and 6.34, respectively. This means that their light has taken about 13 billion years to reach us, so we see them as they were when the universe was only about 860 million years old. Webb took images of these quasars at different wavelengths, totaling 12.5 hours of exposure time. The images were so sharp and deep that they revealed, for the first time, starlight from the galaxies that host these quasars. Astronomers were able to measure the masses of both the galaxies and the black holes and compare them to each other and to other quasars and galaxies in the more recent universe. What did they find? Well, the results were pleasantly surprising. 
They found that the masses of the galaxies are 130 billion and 30 billion times that of the sun, and the masses of the black holes are 1.4 billion and 200 million times that of the sun. These are huge numbers, especially for such early times. They also found that the ratio between the galaxy mass and the black hole mass is similar to what is seen in the more recent universe, suggesting that there is a connection between the growth of black holes and galaxies over cosmic time. This is a major breakthrough in our understanding of quasars and galaxy formation in the early universe for two reasons. First, it shows that James Webb is capable of detecting starlight from ancient galaxies that host quasars. The second is that these galaxies are massive and have massive black holes at their centers, which leads to the question, how did these black holes grow so large and so fast? And how did they affect their host galaxies and their surroundings? To answer these questions, we need to look at how supermassive black holes grow with their galaxies. Supermassive black holes are not only fascinating objects in their own right, but they also play an important role in shaping their host galaxies and their environments. As they absorb gas and dust from their surroundings, they release enormous amounts of energy and radiation, which can heat up, ionize, or blow away the gas around them. This can have various effects on star formation, galaxy evolution, and cosmic ionization. Star formation is the process by which gas clouds collapse under gravity and form new stars. This process depends on many factors, such as the density, temperature, and metallicity of the gas, as well as the presence of external sources of radiation or feedback. Supermassive black holes can affect star formation in different ways. On the one hand, they can stimulate star formation by compressing or cooling the gas around them, or by triggering gravitational instabilities in galactic disks. On the other hand, they can suppress star formation by heating up or expelling the gas around them, or by preventing it from cooling down. Galaxy evolution is the process by which galaxies change their properties over time, such as their size, shape, mass, luminosity, color, and morphology. This process depends on many factors, such as the initial conditions of the galaxy, its interactions with other galaxies or with its environment, its star formation history, and its feedback mechanisms. Supermassive black holes can affect galaxy evolution in different ways. On the one hand, they can enhance galaxy growth by merging with other black holes or by accreting more gas from their environment. On the other hand, they can limit galaxy growth by ejecting gas from their host galaxy or by preventing gas from falling into it. Cosmic ionization is the process by which hydrogen atoms in the intergalactic medium are ionized by ultraviolet radiation from stars and quasars. This process occurred between about 400 million and 1 billion years after the Big Bang, and it marked a major phase transition in the history of the universe. Supermassive black holes can affect cosmic reionization in different ways. On the one hand, they can contribute to reionization by emitting ultraviolet radiation from their accretion disks or jets. On the other hand, they can delay reionization by consuming gas that could otherwise form stars or by heating up gas that could otherwise be ionized. As you can see, supermassive black holes are not just passive spectators in the cosmic drama, but active agents that influence their surroundings in complex and sometimes contradictory ways. Understanding how they grow with their galaxies is crucial for understanding how our universe evolved from its infancy to its present state. We have reached the end of this episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. And don't forget to share your thoughts and questions in the comments section below. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for watching and see you next time.